Yeah. Old people get lonely, lonely. Their kids forget all about them. They never come visit them when they go to the nursing home. Joe was no different. And I'll be no different either. I don't know what I'm going to do. Being stuck in a nursing home day in, day out, not be able to go to a karaoke place and have some fun. There will be larger consequences if we make this decision. We need to be ready for that. It's been about five or six years that I played golf. Of course, uh, my uh, cigarette smoking when I was 13 years old. I was working in a dirty factory for 50 some years, breathing all the fumes in the factory from cutting metal as a machinist. Uh, ruined my lungs. I'd go uh, practice to play golf, you go to the driving range. I had to rest a whole minute to catch my breath and take it one swing. So I know damn well. I'm not ready to play golf again. I never played one golf course here in Florida. I played back here in 2002. My lungs were good enough to play back here. And when I met, when me and my second wife came down here, we visited Fort Lauderdale. Then we went up to uh, Kissimmee, Florida, over by where Walt Disney World is. We never stopped there at Walt Disney World like most people do that come to Orlando. We just went to play golf. And golf is real cheap there too. It's cheaper than playing up north in my hometown. We well, had fun, but that's all we did. Plus, eating some nice restaurant. Then we came back home. That was, uh, you know, that tow road that we took that one back up from Fort Lauderdale up to Kissimmee, Florida, which is Orlando, uh, where Disney World is. Fort Lauderdale is just uh, north of Miami. So it's about 200 miles away. Anyway, uh, there's a toll road, only one toll road in Florida. Why? Because you know, it's like Wisconsin, the state just north of Illinois. They depend on people from Illinois and Chicago to come up there and spend money. They're not going to charge you for a toll. People you get mad at you. They want a, a free ride up in Wisconsin. Same thing with uh, Florida. And there's no toll roads in Florida, except that one gets the people who really have to get somewhere in a big hurry. Highway 23 is a toll road. And it comes right near, only two miles, uh, two miles um, west of that toll road, where I'm living right here now in this very expensive apartment that I got for my wife. So she was, what I only have a few seconds minutes to drive to work. The things I did for that woman. And now she wants no sex in bed and a divorce. Why? Because she knows my bank account is down to nothing. She wants more money. She wants divorce and that way we sell the house and then she takes her 50% and gives me the other 50%. Can you people, or are you old enough to understand? I know your children in school, probably not. I'm sure the adults are old enough to understand when I understand what I'm telling you. But that's life for me. What am I going to do? Um, if I go live with my son, Brian, in San Antonio, they have karaoke bars there too, people. Sure, and the weather is just as warm as it is here in uh, Jacksonville. It's on a slave or latitude, whatever you want to call it. And they have karaoke bars, but they're not as great. You know, uh, when I spent uh, two weeks there, my son had to go to Mexico City with his daughter, with his wife, I think, where she's in Mexico City. And uh, he said, here's a car, uh, son, uh, father, you can use my car when I'm gone. I went to karaoke places there, and there's some places, there is nobody there watching to see. Because they all went outside for a smoke. As long as they had a cigarette in their hand and a drink in the other hand, and they set out in nice weather in San Antonio in uh, late November, that's all they wanted. They were just out to have a smoke and a drink. And you can't do that, drink. You can't smoke in Texas because they're just like Illinois where I'm from. No smoking.
in Illinois where I'm from, where I first started karaoke, they didn't carry it, it was 20 below zero, I'll say. Or if it was raining, the cats and dogs. No smoking in Illinois. And I suppose New York State is just as strict with their smokers. But I tell you, in Illinois, the winter is not as great as it is in San Antonio and Jacksonville. It gets really cold there! And we have rainstorms in Illinois, and cold weather, and uh, you have hot weather, too hot to be inside out of air conditioning in July and August. August is terrible. It's too hot and sticky in Illinois, around Chicago. Southern part is even worse. Anyway, but the, the smokers there, they went out and had a smoke in five minutes flat. Then back in where it's warm. In uh, Texas, San Antonio, no. Those people stayed out there in hours, having a cigarette in one hand, chain smoking, and a drink in the other. They didn't come there and listen to some fool like me singing. They went to go out and have a smoke and a drink. And with their friends. There are every smoker is in Texas. And they are not allowed to smoke in the bar. No bar. So a lot of times I went out singing. There was a few people in the bar when I started singing. And they all went outside. Because they couldn't stand singing and that there for one more minute without a smoke. Same thing even with the most popular bar down there, uh, Dave's bar. Uh, they're so busy you won't even answer the phone because they don't need any more customers. they got plenty already. They're doing the best business of a karaoke place in the whole city of San Antonio. I didn't find out about it except some people who told me they had a karaoke bar to go there. That's where the action is. Of course, there was a lot of action there too. People really appreciated my singing there and really applauded me. And for some reason, there was enough people there where a few people that did go out in the patio and have a smoke, it didn't hurt that much. Because there were plenty of people there who weren't chain smokers left at the bar. To give you, you know, what's this? I always had a route before, uh, what even go up there unless there's at least 20 people at the bar. It's not even worth it. You're just wasting your breath singing to a small crowd like that. Anyway, uh, I don't think I enjoy myself. Even though I could give my son a nice big apartment to, with my money from Social Security and my pension, I can give him uh, money so he can afford a nice bigger apartment. And I don't know what they're going to do after they have my grandson in late April, May 1st. Where do you put all the baby stuff? Right now, their apartment is so crammed. Yeah, I feel like a sardine moving up there. Like about, it was only about a 500 square foot apartment. It only cost them like under $600 a month rent. And it's upstairs. For me, my lungs had been walking up them stairs and being careful so I don't fall down like a lot of old senior people and break their hip or their neck by falling down. I have to be real careful when I go visit. Anyway, um, I'm going to try to get my son and his Mexican wife, who speaks only partial English, and my grandson that's coming here, being born at the end of April. I want to try to get him to come here and move to a nice apartment over here in Jacksonville, where it's centrally located between my karaoke bars. So I won't have to drive so far. I only have like one or two beers when I go out to drink, because uh, I sure don't want to get a DUI. My uh, stepdaughter got a DUI. She's paying like $400 a month for insurance right now. She's lucky she got a excuse to go to work. She's lucky she even gets to drive at all. Even uh, dinner up her car a few times, the access she had getting out of the bar. She over drinks too much. She should have a driver. Some people can't help it. They go out to the bar, they like to get drunk.
but it's against the law, people. It's a big thing for getting caught the U.S. It costs thousands of dollars to pay for that court. I, I know one friend of mine at, as a karaoke singer, I pick him up sometimes and give him a ride. He depends on his uh, niece to give him a ride back and forth the bar. He lost his life a long time ago from DUI. And it's so expensive, people. Uh, a lot of people are forced to sit home and sell their car because they can't afford the insurance. It's ridiculous. Of course, uh, it's a good law. Shouldn't have trucking drivers on the road where they can kill other people. Everybody has to have a car and, have, and drive around and not have to worry about some drunk smashing into them. I understand that. That's why I only have one or two bits. Anyway, uh, but if I can move somewhere where it's not too far to drop, like uh, the bar by Habibi, it used to take me about 40 minutes to get there because it's all the way out by the ocean. Now it takes me an hour, not 40 minutes, an hour to get there from this place and way out west. And there are 10 miles further west than where I used to live in my, the house that I bought which is my wife is running out to her son and his fellow workers paying us only like a thousand dollars a month rent to help the rent over here. I did all this for my wife and what does she do? She wants to work and no sex and that's the only thing she was good for. She kept a clean house better than my first two wives who are dead and passing dead and gone a long time ago. She did a better job cleaning house. She keeps a clean house. And sometimes I like to keep it. Some of her Filipino meals I'll eat. They're good. And the soup that she makes is good. I'll eat that. And she always did a lot. I haven't, I forgot how to use a washing machine uh, in a dryer. I never had to do, stick a, uh, another piece of clothing. And my second wife did that. I worked 50, 60 hours a week sometimes and still had to go in the weekend, my days of rest, or maybe sometimes only Sunday for a day of rest, and do my laundry. Because my second wife was too lazy to do it. And most of the time, when she did have a job, she complained so much about working, I had to spend hours listening to her complaining about her fellow workers. Every night, plus working eight, 10 hours a day at the factory in the machine shop. That's the kind of wife I have, her second wife. She turned out to be crazy. I had to take her to her psychiatrist to give her a shot once a month so she wouldn't go overboard. It was just a 30 mile drive on the weekend. Some nice thing to be doing when you get one day off in the factory. Helen uh, keeps a clean house and in bed she was pretty good. Um, that's certainly two things. Not a need from her. I can do my own clothes. I ain't worried about running a washer and dryer. Simple task. Throw your dirty clothes in there, wash them, put them in the dryer. I did it for many years for my second marriage. I can learn again how to do it. But um, people, um, the only thing how is good is she cleans house and sucks when you want it. And lately, it's only been like once a month. No, I'm not even going to get that. Maybe I'll be happier being single and living in a centralized apartment. And he even has a garage that's about only uh, cheaper than this place. That's because it's only one bedroom. Where we live here, there's four bedrooms. But uh, that's all the room I need. But I can only get a bigger apartment if my son and his wife and that baby come live with me. So maybe uh, Brian will decide to do that. His job is air conditioning. And believe you people, uh, there's a thing, it gets just as hot here in Jacksonville as it does there in San Antonio. And people need air conditioning. People uh, run stores need air conditioning to keep their food cold or frozen until you buy it from them. And also, uh, they need uh, everybody who has a house or apartment 
needs a good air conditioner in San Antonio. Same here. It's hot here. From um, April, May, June, and July are really hot. August. September, it's starting to cool down a little bit, but it's so hot. October. It's November, December, January, February, March. It is absolutely gorgeous here, people. Well, um, matter of fact, I didn't even put it on a winter coat yet. I just got by with a medium jacket going out for karaoke. But uh, the year before, I had to take out that winter coat a couple of nights going up. Of course, it gets cold in the morning here in the winter time, but in the afternoon, it's almost, it's in the 70s. There's more 70 degree weather here than any state in the Union, people. I think the only town that comes close to us is uh, uh, San Diego. And you, that's if you live within five miles of the ocean. You live further than that, it gets hot and cold, just like it does around where you live now. <laughs> it's, it's, San Diego is a good place to retire, but you better have a lot of money in the bank. It's very expensive. San Francisco has the highest rents in the nation. It's even worse to live there in San Francisco than in Hawaii, for Christ's sake, which is very high itself. Um, well, I know most of you kids are listening to me. You probably know what the hell I'm talking about. But you like me because I know how to sing. Well, I have a gift from God, the ability why my singing is good. It's God that gave me the singing voice. And you call me, refer to me as a God. Uh, I'm not a God. I was, that's like if you refer to me as a saint. Saint Johnny. <laughs> Don't call me a God. I am not worth it being a God. I know, maybe it sounds good, give me a nice compliment like that. But, um, it's kind of against my religion a little bit. Just call me saint and I'll be happy. Or just, you really enjoy my singing. I don't know how many ways there are of saying that, but uh, I enjoy reading your comments. And I usually heart them. Not because I really love it, people, because it's a marker. If I don't have time to read hundreds of compliments in a day, I have to mark off where I left off. And those hearts help out. And sometimes the comp is really nice. I'll give you a heart and an upside too. Two. Or if your comment is interesting enough, I'll even take the time to type with you. Most of the time with one hand, so you're not going to see a capital letter there, or you see all capital. Just because I'm too tired to use both hands to type with. I'm 75 years old. These are supposed to be my golden years. These are supposed to be my happy years. And now my wife informs me she you wants to divorce. To bring this man down I don't know what I'm going to do if Brian doesn't come up and live with me. We can always rent a bigger apartment, you know which would be a step up for him. He's living like a sardine in that small place. <laughs> the thing is, I don't know if they're in apartments, do they allow dogs? Well, my son is a dog lover. He has a dog. I'm sure they do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, some apartments say it all dogs. As long as you keep after them, they don't go around biting other people and stuff like that. They have rules about dogs. And uh, we can get a big enough apartment. Maybe just a room just for his dog to spend the night. We got the money to do his uh, paycheck as a HVAC man. That's what he does for a living. That's uh, heating and ventilation people. They take care of your furnace for heat. They take care of your air conditioner. Or they take care of one unit called, uh, what we use down south here in Florida, called a heat pump. It does both. We can't use them up north because they don't take enough warm air out of the cold winter air out there to warm your house. Up north you have gas furnaces, natural gas. And we even use the natural gas for the dryers to help heat the clothes when you dry them. And for your hot water, you got another gas appliance. And for your cooking and your baking, we use gas. Over here, 
in Florida, in Jacksonville anyway. The only place to use gas is electric company <laughs> to make electricity. <laughs> you need heat, folks, to make electricity. Uh, steam, heat the water, steam, turn generators, and make electricity. <laughs> I know uh, most of people are not caught up in science as much as I am. I like to read about energy producing things. It's just interesting to me. And I'm very good in math. I would have probably been a scientist if I had money in the English four class in high school back in 61. I couldn't stand that course. It ruined my chances of going to college. They said, oh, you need four years of English, you want to go to college. And two or four years of foreign language. Two years of foreign language. And four years of English. If you want to go to college, you got to take that. Anyway, we like to give you a scholarship here in North Chicago High School. For sure, it's the same way with other high schools all across the country. But that was a misdemeanor taking English for. Who cares about Julius Caesar? That's boring. Why do they make me read that shit? It's not about English people, it's literature. They want you to have a literature education if you're going to go to college. Anyway, they gave me a hundred dollar scholarship. Big fucking deal. I, can, I said, keep it. What good is a hundred dollars going to do? That's not even enough to, to buy your clothes to be into back then. Because you look like a real college student with some nice college clothes to wear to go to class in the morning. <laughs> Only rich people get to go to school nowadays, people. And my poor wife, she's never going to be able to pay one penny back to the government for giving her that education. And you people think it's right for her to divorce me, to get some more of the rest of my money before she stayed when all these years, 11 years been married, she sunk me dry. The place, uh, last place I worked at, Dundubin Company in uh, Walking, way in Southern Walking, was the best place I ever worked for in my whole life. And you know, they made me start, even though I had experience as a machinist, it was for uh, manual machining that I did all those years. From 61, 62, beginning of 62, all the way up to 2000. And uh, 2009, late 2009, I'd say the next couple of years after I turned 65, so I'll be able to get the same insurance I had, which is 10 times better than most of your people out there. Really good insurance. So I felt I should work to a 67 to get enough points to be eligible for a company insurance. Once I drop years later on it, because it's getting too expensive, especially when Obama gave insurance to everybody in the country. Real nice for everybody. Not so nice for me. And where the insurance company is going to get uh, enough money so they can make a living? All for people like me, just charge them more for their insurance. That's where the money came from. Not for the Congress. came from uh, people like me. They, uh, I used to be 800 a year for that really good insurance I had at work. It was a benefit for all the coverage they had. I mean, it was the same company uh, 2004 when I had a quadruple bypass for my heart. I had two small heart attacks before I didn't realize it. Okay. Anyway, uh, the bill came to hundred thousand dollars, people, which is very much more than most people get around the country for bypasses. And the, those people at the hospital, they said, "That's still not enough money." Mr. Denaris, give send us a check for another hundred, two hundred dollars for this, hour, which we did for you in the hospital, and other people. All together, it was eighteen hundred bucks out of my pockets. The insurance company, uh, the the ambulance company, they had uh, over at Victory Hospital in Waukegan, where I went to. They don't do 
uh, bypasses. That's where they cut to open your chest, people. Make a six inch slot right in your chest. And cut your breastbone right in half, pull it apart so you can get to your heart. And do whatever repairs are necessary. To me, uh, they put about seven or eight spots in my legs, pulling limbs out of their veins to put it around by your heart. Where the cholesterol will fill them, block them up, and causing that heart attack in the first place. That's what my heart operation is, people. That's what a bypass does. And when they say quadruple, that means four veins from your legs going into around your heart. You place the ones that are all clogged up with cholesterol and junk. And throwing it in cholesterol, people, that's not the real cause of heart attack, by the way. Anyway, um, the ambulance that took me from Victory Hospital over to Condo, which is a rich city, richer than I could afford, property is very expensive, to a condo hospital where they do bypasses. It's about 15 miles away of, uh, west of Victory Hospital. And the ambulance driver didn't even know how to get there. So I told him. Because I'm very committed. I know uh, walking is in my kind of the back of my hand. Because of driving all the years I lived there. I told them how to get there. And what did they do? They charged my insurance company $3,000 for that ride. For a 10 minute ride over to the condo hospital. $3,000. And they didn't know directions how to get there. That's common things for hospitals in the United States. They'll charge people like me thousands and thousands of dollars, every little penny they can scrape out of your insurance company to pay for the people that can't afford insurance and have to need fixing. It all comes from the rich people, people, not from the government. They make the rich people pay, like me. And I was never rich. Sure, I make good money as a machine shop, but not that much money. Enough for the company to get by. But, uh, that's the way it goes, people. First your money, then your clothes. When you live here in the United States. And we never, ever in my whole life, I've been in the hospital like eight different times, have ever seen a hospital as bad as St. Vincent. That is the number one place to go if you want to commit suicide when you get out of it, because they fuck up your mind so bad, you think life is not worth living anymore. putting those things on my hands so I couldn't rip off anything else besides that mask on my face. I never touched my heart, my heart. I never touched those tubes that go to your veins so they can put the IV feeding through your arms and legs. I never touched them. They put that, those gloves on my hand just to punish me for not wearing that mask that caused pain to my face. Sure, it wasn't, those gloves weren't as bad as the paint that was coming from my face when they put that mask on me. Then I ripped off. That was just for punishment, people. Say, oh, you don't want to listen to us, huh? Well, here, we're not going to let you touch anything. We're going to put these big gloves on your hand, and you will never be able to take them off because they're going to be on so tight. Nobody could possibly take them off. I was ready for the mental hospital when I got done with that. I begged those people. I thought maybe if I was nice to them, they would take the gloves off me. I wouldn't have to spend all the miserable time in the hospital, plus miserable time and not knowing you can't touch anything. You think it's simple what I'm telling you? Not until they, you are actually over there and have it done to you, are you going to become a crazy person. And why did they put that catheter on my penis? I never spilled one drop of penis. I know, I, number two, I, I made a mess one day. They had to change my bedding. I couldn't help it, it was an accident. They didn't come over quick enough and, and help me out of bed to use that thing. They were too busy, you know, it was nobody's fault. But I'm so sorry that uh, I, I made that mess for them. They had to change the whole bedding and everything and clean me up. But, uh, I never dropped one speck of urine on the hospital floor. I always got to the plastic tube uh, jar they gave me to, to take a leak in. 
why did they put that catheter on my penis? I'll never be able to tell you. I've been to several hospitals. I've been to about the seventh time I've been there for pneumonia. I spent about five or six visits to in Waukegan, in my hometown in Illinois, where I spent almost my life. Even uh, Wisconsin, I had to go out to the hospital, where I lived there for 10 years. It's just 10 miles north of me. Um, but uh, they never put a catheter on me. I do say one thing about that condo hospital, that rich hospital that is all the bypasses in an expensive town to live in Libertyville, where you have to inherit money if you want to live there, because nobody else can afford to live there.